to get yeah, on this. Jeez. Get a lot of time if I don't get to work on yeah. Felt like Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. We will call this meeting of the Delta Township Board to order. Will the board members and guests please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Mojica. Trustee Cascarella. Present. Trustee Brewer. <laughs> Trustee Bowen. Here. Treasurer Fidewa. Here. Clerk Clark is present. Supervisor Fletcher. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. A motion to excuse Trustee uh, Brewer would be in order. I don't know if it would be in order. So moved. Second. I'm good motion supported. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Begin with a special presentation this evening. We have officials from MDOT to give us an update on the I-69 and 496 projects that are going to be taking place, or I should say continuing in 496 uh, regard that next year. So welcome. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to come talk tonight. Um, may Let's see what happens when I try this. Share my screen. Okay, there we go. That was less painful than I thought. Okay, well, appreciate the opportunity to come talk tonight. Um, I've been kind of getting out to the community as much as I can to talk about an overall program that we have going in the area we have a lot of investment a lot of improvement uh, a lot of road work yet to go in 22. Um, so I, I have a real quick presentation it's kind of interactive as far as i can go through it in about 20 30 minutes at a high level or if we have conversation or you know questions or whatever i can answer those along the way as well so um, i'll get going through it right now we're, we're real happy that uh so the the lansing transportation service center is where I work, and my name is Greg Lash. I'm the manager of that service center, and we take care of the three counties around Lansing. So Ingham, Clinton, and Eaton County is really where our area is at that we take care of as far as road and bridge projects. 
And uh, we did real well when we were approved to use the Rebuilding Michigan funds on um, bond funding. So we were able to secure quite a few dollars that we didn't normally have in our program, which allowed us to bring projects forward that we would not have been able to build without those bond funds. One of them is a, a big project we have going. Um, we started it in the fall of 2020. We've worked on it all this year, 21. We're gonna work on it again in 22 and again in 23, which is a big rebuilding of uh, I-69 between Charlotte and I-94. So this project is roughly 24 miles of work and it has a cost of about $210 million. Allows us to work our way from north to south. This last year in 21, we, we worked between Anger Road and Island Highway, which is right there in Charlotte. Rebuilt both east, or I'm sorry, north and southbound 69. And, and then in 22, we're gonna work on northbound to, to rebuild northbound maintain traffic on southbound. So from Angel Road all the way to I-94 in 22, we're gonna rebuild. That's about 13 miles of freeway, two lanes. And then we're gonna come back in 23 and rebuild southbound. Um, there's also some improvements at the interchange with 94. And we're also replacing um, 15 mile road over I-94, which is gonna be pretty complicated with the traffic control down there. Um, I do have some more slides here. There we go. So this picture here is, is from that project and uh, the project's asphalt, it was concrete. So we removed a lot of concrete out there. We're putting asphalt back. The reason for that is we went out with a alternate payment bid contract. So we put out multiple designs for two different types of material, concrete and asphalt. And then they have to meet the same design criteria, but the, the less expensive option is the one that wins the bid. In this case, asphalt won this bid. So for 24 miles of asphalt, there's about 750,000 tons of asphalt we're going to be paving out there in three years. And uh, this is a picture of early October. Um, we called the contractor, asked how much, how they were doing staging wise. They said they still had about 100,000 tons to pave between October 1st and Thanksgiving. Um, so that's a lot for us. And so they had three pavers out there for many days in a row. Um, they were putting out, you know, anywhere from 1,500 to 8,000 tons a day. And uh, it was a pretty good production. They, they did a really good job it, staying on schedule. We didn't hit Thanksgiving, but uh, the paving was pretty much done by then. And we had some guardrail signing to do after that. Um, this is the next project on the list today, another Rebuilding Michigan bond-funded project. Uh, we're working on I-69 between 96 and Airport Road. Another big rebuilding project for us. So we're rebuilding both east and westbound. Many of you saw the work that we started this year out there with the closing of the westbound ramp to I-96. It's one of our more uh, traffic impactful stages. So we got it out of the way this year. So that ramp has been rebuilt. It's probably tough to see, but you can see the, the blue purplish color from 69 down to 94 or down to 96. And uh, that was done here just last week, opened up and back to traffic. So we're happy to have that rebuilt. We'll be back in 22 again to rebuild both east and westbound I-69 between 96 and Airport Road. Um, and then we'll be back in 23 to finish that project up with some most likely removals of our temporary works that we did this year and, and maintaining traffic pavement that we needed that will not remain in place when the project's done. And this picture is just a aerial of the, the crossover that we built to maintain traffic this next season. There's approximately just, just under 100,000 cubic yards of material being placed in that median right there to, to basically pave and provide uh, access for traffic next year when we're rebuilding the rest of that project. So a lot of scope, big project, also um, made possible by rebuilding Michigan funds. Um, Another project, so I came today to kind of talk about some of the larger projects in the overall regional area. This is another large project that will start this spring on 127 at the basically the Jackson Ingham County line, run all the way up to Mason. Um, another, you know, just under $70 million paving job that we'll be doing along US 127 to help, you know, stretch the life of that, that roadway, improve the ride, and do some safety improvements along the way. Um, this, this project on M43 is out in the Okemos Meridian Township area. 
So we're gonna be rebuilding some of Grand River or M43, where we typically see a lot of flooding. Um, this project is uh, meant to improve pedestrian safety and also uh, take care of some of the flooding that we routinely see out there that requires us to close down Grand River and M43. Um, we've talked about this to start right out. This is the next section of I-496. Many of you remember we did a project right out here in 2020 and uh, finished up in the fall when we did a lot of that public outreach. You know, we heard a lot of uh, questions. Why are you stopping at Lansing Road? Why aren't you gonna keep going? And the answer was, uh, we didn't have the money. The road was just as bad condition wise, but uh, we didn't have the money, but rebuilding Michigan um, gave us a path forward. So we designated this project to go design build as well, which allowed us to get it out the door as close to the heels of that past project as possible because the, the original pavement was the same age. So this allows us to overlap our design and our construction phase of the project and uh, really allows us to get it out of the door into the bidding um, pages on, online as, as quickly as possible. So the, the, the tentative timeline for this, and we do have a contractor and design team on board for this. So when I say tentative, this is pretty much sealed up now, but uh, we still have you know, room for some variability as they um, put together their plan and work with us for approvals. But in 2022, we'll, we'll close 496 at the MLK ramps and detour traffic up onto the service drives. And uh, basically the blue shading that you see here, we will be reconstructing and rebuilding in 22. Um, all the ramps, the freeway in both directions between Lance, or the MLK ramps and the Grand River Bridge. Um, and then, of course, traffic will be up on the service drives. And then we'll come back and do the red area in, in 23 under part width construction. So we will be maintaining access to all the surface streets and this area throughout the entire construction period of this project. Um, so the, the freeway will get part width construction in the red section. And then when those service drives are be done being used as uh, detours, we're going to uh, repave them as well, as well as doing some uh, sidewalk ADA upgrades and stuff down through there. So, um, and then there's a lot of bridge work It'll be going on at the same time. So, and this is gonna be all set up to not really interfere with traffic, you know, with parallel routes. So we're gonna work on every other bridge. Most of it is gonna be uh, rehabilitation. So the, the structures are in good shape, but they need to have like throw oil changed if you're gonna compare it to your car or their shingles replaced. So we gotta go back down through there and do some joint repairs, some barrier wall patching, deck patching just to extend the service life of the bridges, but they're, they're structurally sound. So very few of them are gonna get a lot of substantial work. So the maintaining traffic and stuff should be short-term impacts. And this is one of the reasons why we're going with the full detour. Uh, under 496, we have a, a major storm sewer system with the freeway being low, like it is, it gathers a lot of water. So we have the storm sewer system that runs under all of eastbound and uh, about two miles, anywhere from uh, you know five, six feet deep to mm, the majority of it is over 20 feet deep. And that's a 60 inch pipe. So there's no good way for us to maintain traffic next to this trench while we're replacing it. And while we move traffic over to the other bound like we did on the last project, there's no good way for us to maintain those ramps or access. So for safety and for access and to condense the schedule the best we can, we went ahead and set up a full closure and a detour up on those service drives. And I'll go through these next couple kind of quickly because there's a, there's a lot of work planned for 127 as well, but uh, most of it will not start. Um, substantial impacts will happen next fall with the replacement of two bridges at the 496 127 interchange right here with this line green, this green rectangle is that right here. There's uh, two bridges there that we need to replace due to condition. And then we have uh, you know, this, this section here, this black line, and this kind of burnt orange section can be rebuilding those in 23, 24, 25. And uh, this green rectangle, um, if we replace those bridges this fall, 
allows us to kind of enhance or maintain traffic plan in the future. So we've staged all this to kind of build on each other. It's all being designed at the same time. We will be broke out into multiple projects. More of the same. Um, the southern section, I guess I'll just show this on here. You know, we're looking at a rebuild of this area. It's approximately $153 million worth of work right now. It is also a rebuilding Michigan project. Um, and then to the north, we have uh, about $60 million worth of work that we'll be doing between 496 and I-69. And anybody who drives that area knows the issues that we see out there. I mean, there's we track the crash patterns and the delay, and uh, it's mostly always red or yellow. And there's always emergency services responding. Um, so with some of the alignment changes we're gonna be able to make, improvements we're gonna be able to make, it's gonna make this area operate much smoother, which will translate into safety improvements. And then this is the kind of the overall, overall area. Um, as far as projects that we have planned out to 2025, um, we have other projects, 26 and 27, but they're kind of out there and we're not exactly sure on schedule and we're still going through the details of scope. So I don't have a lot of information on them yet, but it'll be something I can come back at a later date and kind of update everybody on. But uh, a lot of the slides that I went over here don't even include some of these projects that we have listed here. Um, in this area, I'll come back to that one real quick. Uh, M100, we do have a, a capital preventative maintenance project that we plan on doing an asphalt resurfacing all the way up through Grand Ledge, from starting at Doan Highway to the south through Grand Ledge and stopping at the railroad tracks. And then we will be doing a, a chip seal from the railroad tracks north up to Grand River and I-96. And then at the same time, we're gonna be out here in 22 to do, uh, this is a combination project right here. We combined several different types of fixes, this blue line right here. So we will do uh, shoulder upgrades, cable guard, cable guardrail installation for the full 10 miles. And then we'll do concrete patching in 2023 uh, to avoid conflicts with single lane closures in this green I-69 project at the same time. So, um, we also have, I was sure I was going to get questions on this tonight, so I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about it a little bit. We do have a, a safety and operations project that has been selected for, for right out here, right out from basically broadband to the freeway. Um, we do not have a lot of scope detail for this project yet. We obviously were able to put information together based on the developments that have gone in, the operations that we're seeing now, and projected traffic impact studies. So we have a good idea of what needs to be done to enhance both safety and operations. But uh, we are still putting together a lot of the uh, details needed to continue to develop this plan. So this is, what you're looking at right now is a very colorful high levels concept is what we put together. Um, this is what we put together to go after the funding because the funding source is competitive. And uh, this project scored very well, which allowed us to, to capture the project. So um, right now it's, it's looking like a 27 construction. And uh, we hope to start design on it here in another year. Um, as far as when I say start design, start reaching out, talking about what we're looking at, going over the, the high level concept so that we can start developing those more in the weeds details moving forward. So yeah, go ahead. I have a question for this one. Sure. With this boulevarding, does that include closing some of the entrances, exits off of 43 to the marketplace areas to, to keep traffic? That would be what ideally one of our goals Okay. is to, to work on access management because mm -hmm. that will help with the overall safety of the corridor. But there are some rules we have to follow before we can close driveways. So, you know, we'll we'll have to, those, we don't know which ones we're looking at either. Okay. Um, so that'll be something that we have to work with, you know, the township, the business owners, um, all down through there if, if we get to that point. But that is something that you would consider in, if for safety reasons? It, it would definitely be something we would propose Excellent. if it improves safety and operations. Drives yep. through there a lot and it's getting scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's, you know, the 
The good news is the development is going to bring a lot of business to the area, mm -hmm. but this area already is busy, and we want to make sure that we're we're doing the right things to. So what we we've done is we've projected traffic patterns based on impact studies, you know. So we have a lot of computer modeling that shows what we think might happen, but until things get built, we can actually see what's going on. We don't want to make a long term investment without actually seeing, you know, the actual you know impacts that have been caused by the development. So it's threading that needle of we don't want to jump the gun and do something that's not needed um, as far as, uh, you know, details here or there. Uh, but, you know, we, we can only project so much without actually seeing driver behavior. I have a question. Too. Yeah. Well, uh, what sort of uh, component do you have in taking into account pedestrian safety and access through this site? So that will be part of the actual project is to focus on operations of both traffic safety of traffic and pedestrians. So we do have pedestrian safety as one of the components of this project. So as we look at uh, the boulevard section, I mean, uh, this is, like I said, real high level. You can kind of see where we have, you know, pedestrian actual crossings kind of, I guess, penciled in for now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this will have to be studied further before we know exactly where they need to go and the best places to put them. But uh, enhancements to, ped to pedestrian safety and not motorized safety will be part of this project. Thank you. Yeah. Let me see what I got here. That was really the last slide I had. So I, like I said, I went through that pretty quick. Wanted to make sure I got it all on the table. Um, but I can answer any questions anybody has if there's anything else. Andrea. Um, I just had a question on one of your earlier slides. You sure. were showing, I think it was on the 496 stretch, the deep storm. So we're yep. we'll um, up here a little bit right there. system there that you'd be doing work on. Um, is that does that only exist under 496 or are there other any of these other corners that have that? And then my other question is with that work, um, obviously we've had a lot of storm, you know, major storm events. Is there um, an effort to increase capacity to kind of build in some resiliency so going into the future? The answer to that one is from a, it's pretty complicated in the fact that when we show improvements like this to a freeway, we also do both a hydraulic study and a water quality study. So if our pavement gets wider, we're contributing more drainage quicker. Uh, so sometimes that does mean an upsize in the actual system handling that water. But we also can't discharge it any faster to the point of where it's being discharged. So like in this case, the Grand River. So when we set, when we size this up, if we size it up, it's to slow down our flow so that it's not getting to the river as quickly. Um, but sometimes it's also due to the capacity of the water. So it's kind of twofold. As long as our water quality, um, is established based on that rate of flow, then the size also is adjusted based on how much water we're gonna get and how quickly we're gonna get it. But we, we do st follow our standard design, um, say storm events. Um, we have not changed those, even though we hear about it, it seems like every rain event, you know, it's one of those things that I know we're always reevaluating what those design standards are based on what we're actually seeing. but. We have not changed them yet. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? I have another. Um, the, the portion earlier when you talked about going from concrete to asphalt, what is yeah. the difference in life expectancy of the two um, components and also things like um, cleaning off snow and, and that sort of thing? Can you just talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So for, for asphalt and concrete, when we go out with the criteria or the design, we go out with the same loading criteria for both pavements. So we say it should be able to handle this type of traffic for this amount of time, and it's the same for both. But that may mean different thicknesses for each material, right? So for concrete, if it comes back and it meets the criteria that we've put out there and it's 11 inches, you know, the, the asphalt may be 11, maybe 12, maybe nine. It just depends on the overall cross section of the pavement. So in the, that design criteria goes all the way from that surface all the way through like the sand 
subbase and other aggregates that we use to support that structure. So they all vary. So the one design might have 16 inches of sand, one might have 10, but then more gravel, and then the overall top may be thicker. So it all depends on the overloading. Both are, both are designed to last the same amount of time. Both are designed to perform the same way under loading, but they do differ depending on which material you're talking about um, all the way from the top through the cross section. Interesting, thank you. Anybody else? Well, thank you. We appreciate these updates. Uh, you know, it'll be a major, a major work in the area. So we appreciate uh, knowing in advance. We always hear it, hear from our residents when there's major construction going on on the highway. So it's good to have the facts. Yeah, yeah, and we're you know it's it's a uh, kind of a double edged sword. We've got a lot of good investment coming our way, a lot of good improvements. You know, our job is to limit the impacts the best we can. But uh, just these slides here are roughly $650 million worth of improvements. And it's no way for us to pull that off in such a condensed time frame without some impacts. So we're doing our best to schedule the projects to, to not overlap. So we're not sending one detour into another detour, but sometimes we just can't avoid it. Um, just with the sheer volume of work we're doing. So appreciate the time. I'll send this presentation to Brian. Sure. And so my contact stuff is all listed. Anybody has any questions, Sounds feel free to get with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. We have next to approve the agenda. There is a purple sheet that adds the library tax sharing agreement for the CIA, that, which was approved by the library board at 6 to 0. So I think the idea is to add that to the consent agenda with the other ones, right, Brian? So a motion to approve as amended would be in order. I would like to also add an item for on the agenda. Sure. It's under the um, new business. It would be a resolution to oppose the Secure Michigan Vote Ballot Initiative. We, Brian and I are actually working on that to come for the first meeting in January. Did you? Well, let's 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 have and have a discussion. We don't have to really vote on it. So. But we're going to have it tonight. Okay, a motion then to, has been made by Dennis to approve the agenda as amended with those two changes. Is there support? Support. There is support. <laughs> Do all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, you have a communications in there from Consumers Energy for your review. Now we have public comments. Anybody in the audience this evening would like to speak? Now is your opportunity. So come on up to the podium there to state your name and your address. He's, he's clear now. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, so my name is Alana Christ. My address is two, uh, 6221 Delta River Drive here in Lansing, Michigan. I live across the street from Hawk Meadow Park on the Capital City Bird Sanctuary. Uh, it's land, both lands, the Delta Township lands, as well as the lands of which I manage for Michigan Audubon, donated by Carl Hausman. Uh, for the purposes of conservation. In June of 2020, I worked with, uh, start contacted Parks and Rec uh, Director Marcus and worked at the Parks and Rec Commission over a series of iterative information gathering meetings of which I've devoted many hours to myself and my partner, Nalinea Rouse. We are both experts uh, scientifically and in experience in food systems, environmental studies and conservation. We gathered not only uh, a case to make to turn the Hawk Meadow uh, Park portion that is currently being used for industrial agricultural purposes because it uh, outright degrades the land of which I have per, uh, gave in my proposal that I sent to all the board members, as well as a shortened version was given to the Parks and Recs Commission uh, months prior to last month's meeting. At last month's meeting, uh, when I came in to make a comment in support of turning this industrial uh, farmland into conservation as was stipulated by not only the deed in the, uh, the legal binding, but Carl Hausman's vision, because any person who has the foresight to donate land to conservation 
clearly has the idea in mind of the future. And what is being practiced now is not the future. And in a matter of minutes, from what I can gather in a closed door session, is not only was my effort to disregard it, but so was the four to two vote by the Parks and Rec Commission to discontinue leasing the land for industrial agricultural purposes and instead turn it into a, essentially a conservation environmentally sound center, similar to Waldemar Nature Center without the infrastructure and there's another one, South Fenner uh, Nature Center, that would attract not only ecotourism, but be a true investment into this community. Instead, some one or more persons uh, knows the family and on the board and essentially in some form of nepotism, what I can gather uh, is about to make a decision on an emotional sentiment rather than sound scientific knowledge. We just last week had numerous events of extreme weather events, including myself watching that field, which is not covered with a cover crop, soil being washed and whisked away. Furthermore, by, in by investing in industrial agriculture, you're A, giving up, uh, you're allowing the federal government to subsidize the destruction of our lands because without federal subsidies, these commodity crops are worthless because the price of the crop would drop out on the floor. And B, Big Ag has uh, practiced regulatory capture for a voluntary environmental program that does absolute bare minimum and still allows not only no cover crops, but uh, massive amounts of pesticides to be sprayed onto the land, essentially killing biodiversity and negating everything Carl Hosman and our community wants in a conservation park. And that is something we can all value rather than selling out the park to a single proprietary need of which this farm lease that will be posed tonight is about to do. That's my three minutes. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Anybody else in the audience like to speak? Thank for coming. Seeing no one come forward, we'll continue now with your agenda. And we have the consent agenda. It's a pleasure of the board this evening and items on the consent agenda. Andrea. I'd like to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there support? Or. There is support. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on approving the consent agenda this evening? Trustee Cascarella? Yes. Clerk Clark is yes. Treasurer Fidewan? Yes. Trustee Mojica? Mm -hmm. Trustee Brewer? Trustee Bowen? Yes. Supervisor Fletcher? Yes. Motion carries. We have now items added to the agenda and seven just Dennis's this is resolution. Underwriting new items of business. It's under. Items added to the agenda. No, oh, right. certainly. We talked about this at the last meeting on the tail end of our. Yeah. Uh, I thought we were going to bring it up tonight, so I didn't see it on the agenda. So I took the liberty of basically cutting and pacing what the city of Lansing had before them on November 29th. And substituted Delta Township for the city of Lansing. And it's a resolution uh, where all the whereases and all the other uh, rationale for the uh, city council to oppose the Secure Michigan Vote Initiative. Um, and I think probably a number of other municipalities doing that too. I think it's important that Delta Township take a stand on that. I think all the Michigan um, municipality should do so. Um, I know, Madam Clerk, you've been very involved in this. I know it's a passion of yours as well. Um, I just think the sooner that we get this um, established and before it actually um, uh, is approved to be on the ballot, which I think it would, we'd be prohibited then from taking a position uh, at that time that we should, as a board, you know, along with other municipalities, be on uh, record as opposing this initiative because it is a degradation of our voting rights that we have just actually as a state um, have voted to increase through constitutional amendments. Uh, I can read this, but um, I don't think I'll do that. I don't think it's necessary, but that's the gist of it. I just think it's important that we take a moral stance on this and um, be on record. I, I'm not in um objecting to taking a stand we have Ann Arbor's petition that we were or resolution that we were looking at to combine 
some thoughts and create Delta's own. To my knowledge, the city of Lansing and the city of Ann Arbor are the only ones that have to date um, taken a position. So it was our intent um, to bring this at the first meeting in January. But what the pleasure of the board is the pleasure of the board. Yeah. No, I Personally, I think that uh, I don't think that there was any opposition to the idea, but I think, uh, you know, gathering all the data like we're having Mary and Brian do and bringing it back, I think is the best policy to do at this time. But I think uh, I don't remember any opposition being voiced uh, at the time. Right. This was discussed the last time to, to take this up. Well, I'll defer. I just want to keep the process moving on this because I think it's important. And I, I don't necessarily think Delta Township always needs to be a follower. It could be a leader in these types of things. So um, I will defer to January. Uh, I just want to keep it uh, in the forefront for something for us to uh, actually take a position on. Okay. All right. Moving down now to the item of the business. First on up is number nine, the final consideration of a rezoning request in case number 10-2116 and the planning department recommends that we approve this. What's the pleasure of the board on this item? Andrea. Uh, sorry. Um, I move. Uh, I guess upon the recommendation of the Planning Commission, I move that the Delta Township Board approve case number 10-21-16 for the proposed rezoning of parcels 040-050-505-341-00 and 040-050-505-351-00. From AG2 Agricultural Residential to RB Low Density Residential um, for the following reasons, of which are two listed in the packet. Is there support? Support. There is support. Any discussion? See none. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. I have number 10, final consideration of lot six, Delta Commerce Park subdivision rezoning case number 10-21-17 and the planning department will once again recommends that we approve this. What is the pleasure of the board on the same tonight? Andrea. I move that the Delta Township Board approve, approve the request to rezone lot six of the Delta Commerce Park subdivision located in section 10 of the township from O office to C commercial as described in case number 10-21-17 being that the proposed rezoning request complies with the criteria specified for rezonings in section 16.04 criteria for amendment to the official zoning map of the Delta Township Zoning Ordinance. Is there, there is support. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yeah, um, so this is a rezoning request. Uh, and then there's the, the next item, I believe they go kind of hand in glove. And I know that there was some discussion on this in the planning commission regarding, uh, in some of the planning commissioners opinion, whether this was a good fit for the, um, the location of this business. And it wasn't the business in itself, but the placement of it in what had been an office park and right across the street from residential units. Um, I would, is Gary here? I was, or Dave, you know, I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, one of the two. I don't care. I just like, was, was the, um, I guess the issue was, is that how much discussion was there really um, regarding the lighting? I'm concerned more about the lighting. And these are pretty nice residential units that are across the street of these apartments. And then we have, you know, nice landscape offices and stuff. And then I have to be honest with you that if this is a storage facility, I really haven't been too impressed with the aesthetics of storage facilities. And I just wonder if that was discussed at all along with maybe ambient lighting. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Um, so really kind of your questions probably pertain more to the next um, item for the, the SLU, um, but I'm more than happy to talk, touch on it right now. Um, there's a lot of inherent protections already in our zoning ordinance for um, when a commercial property butts against a um, 
residential property. So some of it is lower uh, street lights, but we also have photometric photometric protections, which require that, you know, no light go beyond the property. Um, in the case of, you know, the aesthetics of a self-storage facility that was also discussed, um, and it was one of the stipulations uh, for approval in the special land use requirement. Um, so the applicant has stated that uh, he intends to use um, masonry or cultured stone columns and wrought iron fence um, as part of the required uh, uh, buffer zone. So when commercial touches residential, uh, it requires a what's known as a buffer zone B. Uh, so that's a 30 foot uh, planning area. Uh, so we're requiring that there's an existing berm which needs to be incorporated into that there. Um, our zoning ordinance will protect the larger trees that are already there. Um, regardless, uh, you know, the very nice raw iron fence um, and also some aesthetic requirements for uh, gabled roofs and any part of the facades of the storage units will look nice and be the term that we used in the meeting was equal to what is existing in the facility or the vicinity. Um, the discussion really was around that this use can definitely work there. There's a lot of Delta citizens in the area who would benefit from that. But we do understand that, like you said, some storage facilities can be not necessarily aesthetically pleasing. And if this were to work well there, they would have to take that in consideration. And that was part of the um, stipulation for approval of the SLU. Oh, I appreciate that. Has the applicant done something like this in the past to this level um, with these stipulations that you've just delineated? Uh, the applicant are, does own a storage facility in the city of Leslie, and he is a um, high-end builder himself. So. Uh, and he is here to, to speak to his you know, experience in construction and probably can do so a little bit better than I can. But he's well aware of you know, the conversation because he was part of it. Um, and our anticipation that if this were to be approved, it would be a very nice looking facility. So one of the arguments that I read was that this was to help facilitate a lot of the newer residents that uh, will be residing in the development in Delta Crossings and the Redwood development area. So that's all on the other side of the highway. Why wouldn't it be advantageous to actually locate this facility over there? I would argue that we, if you are going to have a self-storage facility, um, you really don't want it out in the open. Um, it's it, what I consider a quiet neighbor. And I think they do best kind of tucked into nooks and crannies where they're not really going to hurt anybody and, you know, not cause a lot of um, traffic issue or, or commotion. Um, the applicant first started at the Zoning Board of Appeals because our ordinance actually requires that self-storage facilities be located on primary um, roads, so like Saginaw Highway. Um, but I think that's an error in um, our zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, and it was discussed at the zoning board level. Um, our ZBA kind of felt the same way. You know, we don't necessarily want these uses to be prominent, but at the same time, we need to respect that there is a need for them. And particularly, you know, within a half a mile of a drive distance, I think that that location is still gonna well serve any um, additional multifamily. Um, because there really is a lack of self-storage facilities in this area. So I, um, just my last question. Um, thanks to the board for indulging me. Um, so how many, I know self-storage units can vary in size. Uh, just how many is anticipated that they're going to be located? Uh, he's not 100% sure uh, on exactly what um, his site will be able to hold. Uh, he needs to hire civil engineering firm to taking into account stormwater retention and stuff and stuff like that. He did provide a rough, you know, sketch in the packet on what he thinks that would use, but I don't, I wouldn't agree that that's a realistic representation of what we could anticipate. You know, it doesn't take in consideration the 30 foot buffer that's going to be required along the road. Um, there's no, you know, 
areas for stormwater to collect. Um, you know, there may be a requirement for him to connect to additional properties, you know, to join to kind of create um, some better interconnect interconnectivity in that area, which we highly could use. That sounds awfully complicated. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Any other questions? See none. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Nay. Motion carries. Item number 11, final consideration of the Byron Self Storage Special Land Use Application filed 10-21-18, and the Planning Commission recommends. It's a pleasure of the board of this one. You want to keep going, Andrew? <laughs> I certainly will. Um, I move that the Delta Township Board approve the Special Land Use Permit request for a self-storage facility as described in case number 10-21-18 on lot six of the Delta Commerce subdivision for the following reasons of which there are four and uh, subject to um, the six stipulations in the packet. Is there support? Support. There is support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carries. I'm number 12, case number 11-21-19, a special land use permit request for a home occupation on 928 Robbins Road, and the Planning Commission recommends approval for in-home salon. What's the pleasure of the board on this item? Let me get there. Go ahead, Beth. <laughs> okay. Hmm. This is number... Sorry, number 12. 12, yes. I move that the Delta Township Board approve the special land use permit for a home occupation requested for the establishment of an in home salon as described in case number 112119 for the following reasons. Special land use standards set forth in section 7.03 of the Delta Township zoning ordinance have been met, and two, of the specific use standards in section 8.32 have been met. There is one condition of approval. Is there support? support. There is support. Is there any discussion? See none. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed, say nay. The motion carries. And number 13, request of conditional rezoning extension uh, from O office to I industrial with offered use restrictions in case number 10-19-11. And the planning department recommends that the board approve. What's the pleasure of the board on this one? I move that the Delta Township Board approve the request for an extension of the con conditional rezoning request originally described and approved in case number 10-19-11 from O Office to I Industrial. Further, that the Township approve the conditional rezoning extension for a two-year time period subject to the conditions, land use restrictions voluntarily offered by the applicant restricting the allowable land uses on the subject parcel to only business service or repair, trade contractors, home service or repair, and warehouse establishments, and no other industrial uses being permitted to be developed on the subject parcel. Further, that the developer shall execute a new conditional rezoning agreement with the township, indicating the extended time period as mandated by section 16.06D of the 2017 Delta Township Zoning Ordinance. Second. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? So Gary, can I just yep. clarify? Sure. Yep. Gary, I think Gary, you're the one that started with this. Yep. So it's across the road from the rezoning that we did so that runs more. I'm trying to get my bearings. It's at the uh, so the right of this, the red long rectangle. That's also owned by Mr. Chapman, correct? And uh, we rezoned that. No, it's only the I'll call it the it's more east west rectangular. Uh, it's that direction, right on the corner of Mount Hope and Snow Road. So it's about three point eight nine acres. So, but what did, what did we rezone his other parcel for on that east side of Snow? <coughs> North of Mount Hope. Does Mr. Chapman own that one also? Yeah, that's an office classification. So that's what we rezoned it to was office? Correct. Okay. For his for his insurance office. This is going from office to industrial conditionally. And 
Okay, so the building on the north, that is that the uh, Youth for Christ or whatever right, it's the called? The northern building is on our part of the office, part built by Mike Davis. I'm totally lost. Okay. Yes. Gary, uh, remind me what the uh, request door's intent was to do with this property? Well, Mr. Davis and Mr. Chapman had trouble marketing the property for uh, uh, office use. You know, we had a uh, downturn in the office market, of course, and they were having difficulty selling the property for development. And so they thought by expanding the possibility for trade contractors and other types of contractors, not full industrial, they can better market the property. But then again, by COVID, uh, market to, uh, conditions did not improve. Yeah. So they're still kind of in the same uh, spot they were when they started this whole process. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Any other conversations, discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Okay. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries. I'm number 14, the Hawk Meadow Park Farm Lease, the Parks and Recreation Commission or department, I should say, recommends that the board approves a lease for farming uh, to Shady Lodge Farm. It's a pleasure of the board on this one. Let me find that. Supervisor Fletcher. Mm -hmm. I move that the Delta Township Board approves a lease for the farming of the township owned property in Section 2, Hawk Meadow Park for the crop season of 2022 through 2026 be awarded to Shady Lodge Farm, LLC, 6255 Clark Road, Lansing, Michigan, for a total of $2,700 per year. The lease will be subject to the terms and conditions of the lease agreement as attached. Is there support? Support? I'll support the motion. Any discussion? Yeah, I guess I had a question before sure. I wanted to, so I guess, support. Um, I know we've had some conversation already regarding this, um, the lease, and um, I guess I have a couple questions. I know the amount, um, the $2,700 dollars um that lease agreement is for five years and i know there's been a discussion and an offer of a proposal to um utilize this property in a way that may be um more environmentally friendly and unfortunately i feel like it's coming at a time without a lot of preparation and planning and i think the bids already went out um for this next lease um and and there's not an insignificant not um unaffordable but you know it's almost eleven thousand dollars to kind of accomplish that and so um i don't know if anyone can answer i guess one question is when the lease bid when the bid comes up for the lease i realize this is every five years is it feasible for any entity to bid on that? And are they mandated to then farm if they have? Marcus, Brian, do you want to answer that question? I, you know, I, I think to answer the question, I, I look back to the history. And in this case, every five years, uh, usually mid-year, uh, August, if you will, the process starts for the rebid as, as it expires. But from 2010, 2011, it's, it's been for farming. And the, the bid that um, information that went out states farming. So that bid was specifically so anyone who was did bid on that would be required to farm that property. Yes, and, okay. and all, along with the certification that was included. Right. And then my other question is in five years when this lease is up, 
I assume, but don't want to assume that we have an opportunity to reconsider whether or not we continue to farm on that property and can um, potentially look at alternatives and maybe have a plan in place to for alternative utilization for that property. Yeah, you'd always have the opportunity to review what we wanted to do with the property once the lease expired. Okay. I just, if I could make a comment regarding sure. this, I, I, I think it's wonderful the proposal that was put forward to think about the property in a, a more environmentally friendly use, not that I'm opposed to farming by any means, um, but I think given the connections with our park and, and with the property um, across from this, that the Audubon um, manages that there's an opportunity to make this into what could be, I think, a great asset. And, and unfortunately, I think the timing isn't one that allows us, I think there's a lot of planning and work that probably, and, and no criticism, but I think there's just planning that we would all have to put in and think about before making a decision like that. And so I don't know if I feel there's the opportunity to do that at this point, but I think it's something worth um, investing more time and effort in to plan and prepare um, with the next opportunity. Any other discussion or comments? Beth? Uh, I wanted to uh, give Marcus the chance to clear up that question that I had for you about whether this is going to cost the township or whether this is right. income coming in. I, I think in reading the proposal, there was a there were a few comments about the township and its equipment to could lower the cost, but you were correct. The bid was for five thousand dollars. So for the opportunity to continue farming but in a different manner. Depends on the definition I, of farming. I mean I okay. I, I, I don't know. Um I, I guess I could answer yes to that. I guess I could answer no to that. I well, don't. that was my understanding that this was a proposal mm -hmm. for a different kind of farming right. of that 30 acres. Right. And um, my, my further understanding and reading it and talking about partnerships and that sort of thing, and we have the, the MSU extension and, you know, Farm Bureau and all these sorts of things that could help support this, that maybe it wouldn't cost the township anything in the long run, grants could come in, you know, if if given the opportunity to do this. And meanwhile, if we go with this other proposal, that's another five years of the environmental problems that are happening right now. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to see the board uh, take steps toward increasing our, our sustainability, our environmentalism, our um, green space. And we have a proposal here that we could work on you know, maybe we don't have all the details right now, um, but what if a month from now we had the details and, you know, a month versus five years, it seems to me that if we've got a, a nice proposal to do something that fits in our strategic plan and our overall idea of, of Delta Township, plus there's all kinds of economic development potential for this and community pride, that it's something worth looking into right now. Um, we made a change, we the board, what, maybe in 12 or 16 that required 16. 16. a certification for um, farming practices and um, our bid that we put out was has has not that it couldn't change, but we put it out for five years and we had a discussion um, about that. So I guess I would challenge that the proposal that was received meets the criteria, the second proposal that was received to, to say nothing of the fact that it's considerably less. Um, income that they're willing to pay five thousand dollars or a thousand dollars a year versus twenty seven hundred dollars a year, and I think that the land there does provide community benefit. I think it's important for families that are 
using hot metal and, and that have an exposure to what agricultural really is and where our food really comes from. And um, I'm totally comfortable moving forward with the motion that I put on the floor. Wow. I don't know where to start on this. Um, well, just going back, you know, the, the best uh, farming practices established by the Department of Agriculture and whatever we talked about, it, it's still commercial farming. It really is, which is fine. Uh, and as far as our residents having the opportunity to see where they get their food, I mean, it's not like we're in the urban center of, of Michigan. I mean, that's all around us. So um, I guess it really comes down to this for me is what is what is our environmental stewardship in this township? And I'd like to see that strengthen when we actually review our, our strategic plan for renewal. And that is one of them is to preserve green space. You, and for the enjoyment of our residents and for biodiversity. I mean, that's our stewardship that we should be engaging in. You know, I understand when we received this property, it was farmland and it had some low lying areas and we did some pathways and we engaged in a farming lease, which is fine. But to assume that's going to be in perpetuity, um, no, it's, it's nothing is. And we actually service better serve our residents and the environment if we take into account what environmental stewardship really means and not just lease it out because that's what we've always done. And I've seen the runoff, by the way, it's real. And so, yeah, I just think that why are we locking ourselves into a five year lease? We could do a two year lease, a three year lease, to give some time to look at other alternatives. So, you know, I, I just think, you know, it's time to, to really seriously consider that. I have no problem in extending this lease for, for a short period of time, but not another five year duration. Andrea? Uh, to that point, I don't know, and this may be a question for legal counsel, but we put a bid out. I believe that bid was four or five years. I don't know if we have the ability then to, to change the terms of that. We don't have to accept um, it. We haven't signed it. I, I don't know if there's an issue there. I do believe there may be an opportunity going forward to think about the use of, of this land differently in a way that's uh, more environmentally friendly and, and that could um, just preserve that um, that natural space in a more environmentally friendly way. But um, I, I don't object to the lease now. I think the timing, the bid proposals were there. And based on what our bid was, we had a proposal that responded to that. I think it may put us in a, a difficult position to just walk away from some a bid that we put out. Um, and for the terms that we put out. So I, I, and please, someone correct me if I'm wrong about that. That's what I understood. It was for a five-year lease. Yes. Uh, Ron, we do you know the Could we shorten the duration and be fine? <coughs> or are we in trouble because we put it out for public? Uh, and Marcus, do you remember the bid? I mean, typically we don't. will sometimes put in language that did, we're able to reject any and all bids or, did or you, change the terms. Do you have to add? I do. Right. Do you want to say you want me to read it or? You can read it. If you want I, I don't know what this particular bid, <clears throat> if the farmer has expenses that, you know, why we right. always opted you know, for a five year those. lease and that type of thing. Sure. So shortening it, I don't know what effect it has on those types of uh, crops or, or uh, processes. I think the only statement here would be the township will only consider bids from a non-verified applicant if there are no bids from MAEAP verified farms. Other than that, I don't think there's any, I guess, restrictive language, if you will. Now. 
that supports that. Or the final determinator. I just have concerns that we may have a legal, create a legal issue for the township at this point. But I, I do want us to look, and I don't think it's too soon to start thinking about five years and having a plan together in, in an alternative use for that property. I don't think we're in any legal jeopardy whatsoever. We're the final determination of whatever we accept for the township to enter into a contract, whether we put out a bid and we had a different policy decision uh, later before we approve the bid. Yes, the person responded in good faith, uh, but it's not a sealed contract until we approve it, period. We have a recommendation and we're delivering policy here and we're talking about, well, do we really want to think about a different type of use for this public land that our residents can actually use um, for its best purposes in the future. And we're not, we don't have to be locked into five years. I mean, we could do a shorter period of time for that. Um, and I, I have no worry whatsoever that that's within our legal rights to do. I, I know if we have a, bid like Ernie and, and Rick and Ernie can attest to this, that if we have a bid that's over what we are expecting to expend for a project, we can put that out for rebid. What I would be concerned about with this is we explicitly in the call for proposals specified the only bids that would be considered that were non, um, non-certified would be if there was not a certified bid accepted and we received a certified bid. Um, I guess we could, um, I, I, I would not, I would want a, an, a, an attorney's opinion before we did something other that we before we accepted anything if we're not accepting this we this bid from Lanyers Shady Hill or whatever it's called um meets the criteria that we put in the call for bids so yeah. yes oh sorry so our, to me, our only option is either to postpone this to a future date or accept it, but I don't see that we have the legal right to accept the second proposal. Um, I'd like to point out uh, just a, a matter of procedure or policy that I went to the website to try to find the bid that Marcus has um, the language that was published in the newspapers. And it's not on our website anywhere, nor is it mentioned anywhere on our website that anyone can bid to you know, do something with this land. And I just think that that's something that we need to examine as a board and think about you know, how we are putting this information out. Yes, it goes in the newspaper and that is you know, the law and right and proper in a democracy, but with all the digital technology that we have, most people are going to go to our website or our social media or something electronic to look for this kind of information, and it's not up there. And I, I would, you know, argue that we should have it up there as well, and, and then that way more people can be aware of this going on. Maybe we'll get more than one qualified bid. Um. I, I don't disagree with what Trustee Bowen said about posting elsewhere. Yeah, I think it's great if we have that on our website. I also really wanted to comment uh, back on um, what Claire Clark mentioned about the um, the legal issues. And I think, regard, I mean, I, I am concerned that there is a legal issue there. That if, if we rescind or back away from um, approving a bid that we uh, proposal or a response to a bid that we put out, but even if there is not, even if legal counsel should come back, I don't think that reflects well on us. That's not how we should do business. We should not be formally 
putting out bids, getting legitimate offers, and then walking away and changing our mind. I think it reflects very poorly and it will affect how we do business with other entities in the township. I think this gives us an opportunity to think and plan and prepare and going forward um, and, and try and, and make sure we have funding lined up and, and those interested stakeholders have funding lined up to, to submit an alternate proposal. Um, so I don't feel we have that opportunity now, but um, I, I do want to look at it going forward. Yeah, I think I would tend to agree uh, with what you said, Andrea. You know, personally, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with the idea of doing a shorter period of time so that we can review and have a broader, longer discussion on this topic. But I do have concern about we discussed it as a board, we decided to put it out to bid, and, and then and now after we put it out to bid, you know, I guess we could have put it, we should have put it out for bid for a shorter period or whatever. But now since we've asked for a five year bid and we received a bid uh, and to uh, now change direction, I think that is problematic. Um, but the issue of a shorter period to, you know, to have a further discussion, I don't necessarily disagree with. I just wish that uh, we, just, we had discussed it at the board. The collective decision of the board on that time was to put it out to bed as we have traditionally done. So and that's what we've done. And, and now we have a, a qualified valid bid in front of us to consider. So what do you want to do with your motion, Mary? Do you want us to hold the vote or do you want to? I move that vote? we delay the vote until the next meeting. So you can't delay it. You can tape, tape postpone it. it. Postpone if you table it. it, it has to come back up tonight. Okay. Postpone. No, postpone it. I move to postpone. The next meeting, January, whatever our date is. Yes. I don't know what that, I don't know what our next meeting is and I don't know what time it would take January for. January 3rd. January 3rd. I don't know over the holidays. I would say. Give us the next one. Andrew. No, um, because I think it's important to have a discussion with legal counsel. So then I move to postpone move. until January 10th. Well, that's a whole amount. We bump it until the end 17. of January. 17. 17. Okay, so move to postpone move until January 17th. 17. Is there support? Is there support? There is support. Any discussion? And then, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I, I believe our meeting is on the 18th. Oh, okay. oh yeah, uh, you're right. We'll, we'll right. make that technical correction to you, the motion. <laughs> catch, catch that quick enough. Um, <laughs> um, a couple items tonight. Um, I was uh, happy to have uh, Greg Lash here from uh, MDOT, um, as you can see. So uh, at least part of the boulevarding, you know, concept is, is public. So uh, that'll be a part of when we get into corridor planning to, uh, um, you know, as I said, get in at the front level on that to help uh, with those uh, plans to make sure it's something that's uh, um, desirable for the township. Um, a couple uh, things really quick uh, with the wastewater treatment plant. We we have uh, <clears throat> our publicizing. Uh, the, we received the uh, findings of no significant impact environmental assessment uh, uh, documented by Eagle. Um, so we have to post that for 30 days for public comment. Um, so we do have that on the website and, and we'll publicize that in several other places. Um, so that is a, a good thing to get uh, get that finding, but it is open for 30 days for public comments um, on that. Um, along <clears throat> today, today is also the last day for uh, uh, referendums. So at this point, we have not heard of any referendums uh, against um, taking out public finance or financing for the wastewater treatment plant. So that's also a good thing. Um, on the, um, uh, we, as you know, this this climate for bidding has been difficult. Uh, we did have our Mount Hope perimeter pathway and Mount Hope North ball fields out for grant um, or for uh, uh, for bid. <laughs> Unfortunately, we only received one bid back, despite uh, advertising publicly <laughs> statewide um, and on the website. We had. Several bidders who are interested came to the pre-bid meeting, but we only ended up receiving one bid. 
Um, it was extremely high, uh, so we'd like to reject uh, that bid, um, tinker a little bit with the, uh, tweak the plans um, and rebid it after the first of the year. We've talked to some of the um, other potential bidders. They're just very busy right now, um, very picky on the projects they, they bid on. Uh, so we encourage them to, uh, you know, to take another look at this project. Um, so hopefully we'll get some better pricing, but uh, <clears throat> right now that's kind of the climate out there. So a lot of, there's a lot of work out there, especially here in Delta. So, um, so that's, uh, that was disappointing. Hopefully we'll get a better uh, outcome. The second one, uh, uh, putting it back out to bid, but uh, so that will be delayed a little bit with those, uh, with those projects. Um, but that's all I have, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Brian? Look like questions. Brian, appreciate that. Uh, any uh, final public comments? Yes, why not? I do have to state my name again. No, okay. My public comment is that uh, thank you, board, for having a, a really uh, nuanced and open discussion about what to do with Hawk Meadow Park. I'm very happy with what I've heard tonight. I think delaying the vote to gather information is not only a uh, prudent option, but just overhearing about rejection of bids, you can absolutely reject a bid if it's not to the satisfaction. And I also like some of the comments about planning for the future. While I do not support a five-year lease for such a thing, because I think that is incredibly long, I think it would be practical to consider a shorter bid lease to allow the farmer to transition out as myself would then be able, myself and my partner and the network of people and resources we will be able to have at the township's disposal to create a really excellent plan to convert that into a public access, uh, asset. Finally, about comment about um, kind of uh, uh, public um, relations, while the farmer, yes, we do not want to screw over anybody, you know, to use it informally, we don't want to upset anyone. I am also a part of that story, too. And it's not just about the person who has the bid. It's about my time and investment in my public engagement and my my uh, my desire to uh, participate in like civic engagement and investing in my township. You know, I'm a resident here, have been three years, and I have no plans on leaving. So while, yes, we don't want to burn any bridges with anyone else, we want to make sure all stakeholders are happy. Just remember that I'm a part of that conversation, too, even if I don't qualify for the state-certified farming board. And I look forward to working with Marcus and also to coming to the next meeting to provide any information and comment on this matter. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience? Any final board comments? Seeing that, seeing no further business before us, so we are adjourned. Thank you.